My name is Joe Roos. I moved to New Mexico in 1983. I've been a hippie since 1969. I'm a veteran. I volunteered to go to Vietnam as a patriot. As soon as I got on the bus from the airplane and it had steel wire on the windows, I knew that I had screwed up. I loved Vietnam. I hated what we were doing in Vietnam. I hated what we were doing to the children. I hated what we were doing to the women. I love women and turning them into prostitutes is about as far as anything I can even imagine that's good for them. I hated what we were doing to the people and I hated what we were doing to the land. There were bomb craters everywhere. The beautiful three-layered jungle was deteriorating. There was a place where I drove often, there would be the beautiful three-layer jungle, then there would be no jungle, and you knew that the jungle should be there. And then there would be jungle again, and the area was obviously Agent Orange. The people excited me. They were smart. They loved their families just like we did. The people in Vietnam had 30 years of fighting that war. They wanted it to end. They didn't care which side won, they only wanted the killing to stop. I put in my time in Vietnam. I finally got to go to Hawaii to see my almost bride. After six days, they expect you to go back to that war. I was standing at the Honolulu airport. I looked at that board. I could go anywhere in the world. I wanted to go anywhere but Vietnam, but I couldn't. I couldn't go anywhere in the world because I didn't have a passport. The only place that I could go was back to Vietnam. While I was in Hawaii, I wanted a pair of blue jeans. So I went to the international market and bought my blue jeans. While I was there, I noticed a t-shirt hanging in the window that had a red, white, and blue peace sign. And it said, Vietnam, the Edsel of our foreign policy. Well, I took it back and I wore it. It lasted about two weeks. One night I was sitting watching the movie and all of a sudden my name was called over the PA wanted me to report to the NCO barracks. So I went to the NCO barracks wondering what I had done now. The old man was in there and he wanted to talk to me about my t-shirt. He told me to turn around and he ripped it from my back. Then he told me to get a uniform on and get out of his sight. One of my best friends, who happened to be a junior officer, came to my rescue that night. He wanted to know the story. I told him the story. He noticed that I was trembling and scared to death. He wanted to know why I was afraid. And I told him that I didn't know what would happen now. Was I guilty of treason? Had I committed a bad crime? And he told me that I had committed no crime. The commanding officer had committed the crime and could do 20 years in Leavenworth for assaulting an enlisted man. So that made me feel much better and made my last four months in Vietnam a breeze. I finally put my time in in Vietnam. I ran to the airplane as quickly as I could go. I wanted out of there more than anything in the world. I ran to college. I did very well in college. I learned how to learn. But I was so eaten up with PTSD that I could hardly exist. One night, a man attacked me. I almost killed him with my bare hands. I realized that my problem was Vietnam. I went home in my drunken and stone stupor. I found everything I could in my house that reminded me of Vietnam and I piled it all in my dining room. I almost lit it on fire, but I knew I loved my home and I didn't want to hurt my home. So I gathered it all up and threw it in the dumpster behind the drugstore to the side of my house. Everything started getting better. I got a real girlfriend. I bought myself a blue sports car. I got a real job. Things got better. Then I came to New Mexico. Things were still getting better. In 2002, a friend of mine in Rotary, he had been to the International Convention and he told me that he'd seen this big banner that said Rotary in Vietnam. We didn't even know that you could go to Vietnam again. So Jim and I plotted that we would go to Vietnam and find the project for our district to do. So we went to Vietnam. I realized about 25 feet off the ground that these people were going to hate me. Why would they be any other way towards me? 
later on when we were finished with all of our procedures and went through customs and got on the bus, this gorgeous young Vietnamese lady got on the bus with her white traditional Vietnamese dress and her yellow star on her pith helmet and she said, we want you guys to relax. We love you here. I leaned across the aisle to my friend and I said, I don't believe that. I expected a confrontation the whole time that I was in Vietnam. I knew that someone was going to come and accost me because of the horrible things that we'd done to the people while we were in Vietnam. On my last day, I was sitting in front of the fountain, beautiful fountain in Saigon, and I could see a young man a block away that made a left turn looking at me and walked right straight towards me. I knew that this was my confrontation. It took him a few minutes to get to me. By the time he got to me, I was standing up. He approached me. He said, were you here during the war? And I said, yes. And he took my hand, laying limp at the side of my body, and he shook it. And he said, thanks for being here then, and thanks for being here now. I thought the people would hate me. The people loved me. They hugged me. They shook my hand. We looked at hospitals, schools, we looked at all kinds of projects, and we decided that you couldn't do better than a water project in a place that children were dying of things that they were drinking out of the water systems. We came back to New Mexico. We toured almost every Rotary Club in the state. There were close to 50 of them. We gave speeches. We raised $35,000, enough money to provide fresh water for 3,500 people in five different villages. I got to go back to Vietnam on what I call the water tasting tour. It was the most marvelous thing of my life. One lady told me, thanks for helping me sleep later. That made no sense to me. She told me the story and it was where I learned that women all over the world spend too much time gathering water for their families. If she lived on an island, she would get up before dawn, load her water containers into the boat, row a mile, walk five or six miles to the local fresh water, fill up her two five-gallon containers of water, and repeat the story back, and she would get back to her hooch about the time that her husband was waking up. So in Vietnam, I learned I was able to serve, and I learned that I got my own healing through service to other people.